Hello. <clears throat> Hello, everybody. Hello, hello, everybody. Good morning and happy Tuesday as we are here for day number two of the five. Oh, my kitties are in the room, so they're kind of like... Uh. Welcome to the five days free video series for feeling to healing as we're going in the next few days. Um, and understanding really what about, yeah, forget about my hair. What about those emotions? How how can we go through them and understanding them and being um, very kind to ourselves and really in a sense understanding ourselves a little bit better so that some things might make sense, so that we learn, we learn to forgive, so that we learn to um, be okay with the past as well as being okay with the present and how can we move on to a future. So yesterday we briefly talked about some of the things related to um, what it is that, where are these emotions coming from? Some of these might be coming from, from you know, like basically not ours, maybe they are from our parents, maybe some of these are coming from, uh, you know, events that happened in the past that whether they were actually related to us and maybe some of them are nothing related to us at all. But then again, we just kind of learn to pick up some things that were resonating in the moment or that they were calling our attention. And then we just carry them on along with us in our lifetime. And so whenever we get like a little hint, whenever we get like a little, um, a uh, trigger from something that's happening now that will remind us to the past or to whatever happened in the past is where we actually get that reminder oh this is what it feels like oh this is how it felt before and probably this is how it's feeling like right now and so if you um i gave an example so for those of you who signed up i gave an example in the email about a personal story for me um, and for instance, I've, I've shared this very openly and I feel like a lot of people, not a lot, but quite a few people who either grew up without a parent, uh, which, which is what, quite common actually, maybe some people who, um, for whatever reason, struggle in their childhood. And so in one way or another, we grow up thinking or believing that there are a few things that, you know, maybe we are not good enough, maybe we were abandoned by the people that we actually trust the most, right? Like our parents, or maybe that we um, were not that important or that for whatever reason that we are not feeling safe or not being taken care of. So then we kind of lost trust. So for us, it might be a little bit harder to trust again, to trust people, right? So my example that the one that I made in the email, and I will briefly tell you is something related to my dad. Yes, I was, I grew up without both my parents. Um, and, uh, but mainly without my dad, he wasn't physically there. He wasn't physically or emotionally. So one of the last year there was, ah, oh, you're here again. <laughs> Hi, Claudia. One of the things that happened was for whatever reason last year, something triggered that feeling, that old belief, that old feeling from feeling abandoned by my dad, feeling that I wasn't being loved, feeling like I wasn't important in his life. And not only that, but also having some, obviously having resentment to what, towards my parents, but as well as having some sort of competition or resentment towards women. Because one of the ideas or the beliefs that I created was that again, because I wasn't, or my dad wasn't around and I, in my mind, I was creating that thought that I wasn't important in his life. And that because he was having, this is when I was super young. I was like six, seven, 10 years old. Um, and that, so he had girlfriends. And so he, my belief was that he did use me for his benefit. Uh, the belief was also that he was, th this other women were more important than I was. And so it carried over. It didn't come until like recently, uh, maybe even last year when I actually realized that 
that oh so it's not just like oh my dad wasn't around but there there's all these other little beliefs that came along with it not feeling important that other women are competition in a sense because in my mind i guess i'm guessing it's like we all are competing for his attention or his love and he's the one choosing and so he chose obviously he's choosing from a mind uh from a masculine man who wants sex or wants pleasure i guess so he's choosing the women uh his girlfriends and so not so much his daughter right and so it's so interesting as i'm talking right now my throat is kind of like not closing but it's raspy i can feel it i don't know what that means but i'm just gonna carry on i'm sure it means something right but I'm still, maybe that's my ego, maybe that's my unconscious that is trying to stop me from speaking too much because this is a truth, or it was a truth to my mind, but as I'm vocalizing it, and I know because I've gone through this healing process, I know it wasn't truth, really, and it's I know that it's not a true, um, the truth that I need to have in my life to live because I know that I'm worthy, I know that my dad loves me so much, and I know, especially years later, some of the things that he went through as well. So he was, as much as I was putting myself as a victim back then, he was also a victim in his own timeline. So again, we will talk about this later on, but forgiveness has a lot to do with this. And as well as understanding where people are coming from. Yes, at the moment where we're growing up, we don't know that much. We don't know really all the reasons around us. And in a sense, um, all we know and all we care about, because really as a child, all we really are focused unconsciously is of our safety, security, right? And so who are the people who are going to give us the most is our parents. So if ne if one or neither one is there, we start doubting and stop trusting. And if we see whatever it is that we see around us that has to do with them, that's the memory, that's the essence that we keep in our minds. So... Uh, anyway, so I went through my process and last year that feeling came back again because of something that he did, which it wasn't malicious. He wasn't meaning anything bad. He was just being himself. And that's the way that also it's really, it's, I will say it's okay for us to feel however we want to feel, but, but then also be very open to see how other people are going through their own process because how he deals with his struggles is very different with how I will deal with mine and they, because they're different, they're not going to be the same, right? So they might collide because it's just, he's a man, I'm a woman, he's older, he's my dad, I'm you know younger, and his daughter. So the way we see life is different. And it's very interesting because he's a psychologist, psychotherapist as well. So that's like a completely different game as well, right? So anyway, so what I wanted to say today is the main message after really realizing where are these coming from? Are these mine? Are these created? Are these false? Which most, most of them are. Hold on a second. Oh my gosh. I have two baby kitties. They're not really babies, but they're really behaving. So if you hear noises in the background, that's them because they're just like, oh, okay. So let's just move on. I'm getting a little distracted. So apologies, but... um. So one of the things that will happen is, okay, now that I know where are these coming from, these are probably not mine, they were created, they were my parents, society, whatever, so how do I deal with them? A lot of people want to already jump into healing, jump into taking care of it, jump into, okay, let's get rid of them. I don't want to feel anger, I don't want to feel, and that's, by the way, that is the one feeling that popped up quite a few times that I never thought that I had in my body or in my mind, and that was anger, that I was an angry person. If you knew me really well, I'm always smiling, I'm always positive, I'm always like looking the bright side of things, most of the time, <laughs> even though I'm impatient sometimes, and sometimes I get a little bitchy or cranky, but it, it'll go away. Um, but I'm not, like driving, for instance, that's like one, um, one sign that you can see about ang uh, people with anger, is that they burst, right? Like they right away, they're doing fine and something triggers and they're like exploding, like, ah, that wasn't me at all. That, that was never me. Like I'll be driving, somebody cuts me off. I'm fine, like, oh, have a good day. I'll send them love. Cause to me, that's not important. I don't pay attention to the little things, you know? Um, however, as I was going through things, yes, anger popped up. No, stop it. Um, anger will pop up and I'm like, oh my God, I never thought that I had anger in me. 
And it made me so sad because if I hold anger, even though my dad probably doesn't know about it, however, I told him. However, even if the other person doesn't know, there is that energy that is still floating around them that is still in one way or another getting into them as well. So I wouldn't want to have anger or any kind of quote unquote negative emotion for so long towards another person. So that's why it's very important to go through this, deal with this and then move on. Okay. So these are, <clears throat> oh my gosh, these kids, would you, oh, I'm so sorry. I hope you understand if you have kids, I don't have kids, kids, I have kitties. And, um, all right. So some of the reasons why we don't let go, why, Wendy, why, why can I let go? Why can I heal? Number one, because it has become part of your identity. It has become part of your story. And this is the thing. This is what happens is that since we've learned a lot of these beliefs, these emotions, this whole story that we created, a lot of them happened when we were super young, when we were little or babies, so they have been with us for quite some time. So they have really become a part of us. They become a part of our being. Again, if this is something that has been happening for so long, I don't know if I want to say anger so much because I don't think somebody could be in, um, consciously angry as a child. Uh, but it is stays in the back of their mind. You know, it's not like kids are super angry. If anything, they could be, you know, going through some challenges in understanding what's happening. So a lot of their emotions are kind of fluctuating and it's not until we get into adult being, becoming adults, adulthood, when we actually are, are setting down those parameters, setting down those thoughts, those beliefs, and then they become really the reality that the reality that we actually are creating in our minds as a kid everything kind of changes but there's always that that thought in the back of their minds uh unconsciously that is happening so if somebody has gone through some sort of emotion let's say sadness or resentment let's just say resentment that's a thing like a almost in between right like a little angry or sad or like not knowing what to do if somebody has been feeling that which i think i have as well um, for so long, it becomes part of the person, part of who she or he is. And so getting, and again, a lot of these guys is unconscious work. So it's not like we consciously are thinking about it, but in our unconscious mind, we think, well, if I get rid of it, if I don't have it in my mind, then who am I? Because that's all I know, quote unquote, all I know. That is the feeling that has kept me going, you know, and maybe not trusting other people. Because if I, ooh, if I take care of being resentful and then I actually start trusting again, then I don't know what to do. I don't know how to trust. So that completely changes. It will start changing a lot of beliefs that we already had. And it will start changing a little bit of our identity. So for a lot, a lot of people who have been living with that belief, um, belief, emotion, story for so long, it is rewriting a whole new story. And then for them, it's like, then who, who, who am I? You know, what am I supposed to do now? How am I supposed to be with people? How is my relationship going to be from now on? So that's one of the reasons why um, unconsciously is what's happening and we don't really change. We don't want to um, try something else or something different. Number two is, because it has been with you for however long since you were kids, since you were a kid, since it all started, then actually not only has been become a part of you, but also is the only thing that a lot of us probably know. And so it has kept you safe. If it is trust, let's say, if we haven't trusted people, if we learn not to trust and always question anything and everyone, then if we start trusting, you know, like, are we feeling safe? Are we going to feel that everybody is going to be good and nice to us? Are we, we are actually opening ourselves up as we're peeling off these layers, we're opening ourselves up and we're being more vulnerable to people. And what is one thing that we learn from our parents or society when we open up and when we start expressing ourselves and we start talking, we learn that, that, that being vulnerable is weak. We learn that it's not a good thing. We, we learn that that puts you, that exposes you, and you are quote unquote prey to more pain, more suffering. And so if it is something that has been with you most of your life and it's been part of you, 
then peeling that off it, it's a little painful because you don't know what's going to be on the other side and again another thing is we associate uncertainty with pain we associate uncertainty what's what's out there what's tomorrow what it is that we don't know right now we associate that with not just pain or uncomfortable but also with the solution with you know like we're going to um um fail we're going to have a hard time who wants to consciously who wants to go through that not a lot of people right i wouldn't even if i knew that tomorrow was going to be the toughest day of my day my first instinct will be like oh no i don't want to do it like what can i do now to avoid it i think a lot of people go through that the very first thought because that's survival mode where we are putting ourselves in or our mind is putting ourselves in the uh, fight or flight right like when you know there is danger when you know that there is something that is going to shake you up a little bit I don't think there's that many people maybe there are a few I don't know one percent whatever I'm just making that up that will jump in and say yes give it to me right good for them if they are there but most of us we just want to be safe and secure here and if 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 feeling resentful if not trusting people if being angry if being sad if being uh, shameful has kept us safe for so long then why would we want to give it away right so again understanding this is actually good if we accept it if that's really what's happening because then we are actually more aware of what we can do next now the third thing is that really this feeling could be the one thing this is more when you are in a relationship with someone and i don't i mean any kind of relationship not just loving relationship it could be parent uh, daughter or son if this is the emotion or feeling that has kept you together with a person maybe this is the only one and why would you want to break it give it away peel it off get rid of it right let's say it's not my case thank goodness i have a better relationship with my dad but I know a lot of kids who do not speak to their parents. Once they learn something, um, or they they the parents did something to them, they don't they completely cut them off. And so, if let's say anger, because probably a lot of them, let's say that is the case, anger is a strong feeling, right? It's a strong emotion that somebody is going through towards another person. So if it is having anger towards someone, and then somebody will come and say okay I'll help you heal from it I'll help you get rid of it so you don't have anger anymore towards this person all you will have is love what makes you think that that is a good place for you to be what makes you think that that is safe for you if for 20 30 40 50 years the only feeling that you've had is anger how do you know that love is going to be the best thing we don't know one because we don't know what the future will be like we don't know because that would be a completely new situation for you to get into as an adult and as an adult we, we take a little longer to create new stories we t it take us a little longer to reprogram our mind it take us longer to actually believe a new belief again <laughs> if that makes sense right so if if there is one emotion that has been with you all your life towards another person that probably is the only thing that keeps you connected and even if it is let's say anger towards that person who who did wrong to you whoever that person might be still part of us don't want to get rid of it because that still keeps us together even if you will say no i don't want to have anything to do with that person but your mind is all about connections your your soul and your mind is always trying to keep you safe it's trying to trying to keep you balanced so if you let's say as a little being you know as a little child as a little whatever you want to call it has grown in this way in this environment in this little bubble let's say for so long until becoming an adult why should we disrupt anything because it might not be safe anymore so again it's really understanding that whatever it was created in the past is going to continue with us because there are reasons for them to be with us and sometimes these reasons are not always making sense but it does make sense to the safety of your soul to the safety of your mind and as far as soul what i do believe is that we do bring in these experiences because it is part of our story and it is part of our history because we need to go through them even with the people that did you know bad things to us let's say we are our soul is gathering those experiences because as we go through them that's where our, our healing comes that's where our learning learning about ourselves learning about people about relationships about life that's where it comes from 
because things won't just come out of like sitting out in the field and like you know looking at butterflies and um, smelling pretty flowers sounds nice sounds amazing it's like who wouldn't want to be out there in the sunny you know under a sunny sky out in the grass and smelling flowers and playing with hummingbirds that's amazing but that that that's nothing yes it's great it's a calm place to be and to have a meditation maybe and then uh some breath work or whatever to keep you grounded but nothing really happens <laughs> in my point um probably you've heard this before growth really happens in the mess so that's why we are here in general so are you surprised of what I told you? A lot of people who I told this, they're like, oh my gosh, I never thought that I was called into this anger because that's the only thing that kept me together with my mom. Or somebody had a lady telling me, wow, like I knew that I was, and again, a lot of these have to do with our parents and it's kind of sad, but it is true. And then actually also I had a lady and for some reason, um, quite a few people, women, were coming to me who were molested or raped as when they were younger. They they already worked through it and they've gone through healing and therapy and all of that, so they are in much in a much better place. So that's why they're more open right now to speak it out loud. But one of this people, one of the ladies, was telling me, "I forgave him. I am okay. Like I, I moved on. I know that that was part of my lesson, part of my learning." But I didn't know that I was actually still holding resentment and anger towards my parents because in her mind, even though they didn't really do anything, she felt that she wasn't taken care of and they didn't save her. Her situation is, you know, like I, I won't tell you the whole story, but it's just amazing how our minds are so, um, they are pulled to believe one thing or the other based on the experiences that are around them. And so in her mind, it was not so much anger towards the person who did the wrong thing to her, but it was more the people that actually she trusted the most who were her parents. And again, they didn't do anything wrong. They, you know, it's, it's just the belief that was created in the moment. So <clears throat> again, maybe you are like, okay, how to move on? How to move on out of this? That's something that we will talk tomorrow and in the next couple of days. But I think the most important thing is not just knowing where are these coming from, as, but also why are we holding on to them and really being very kind because you don't want to get rid of something just because of, oh, it's bothering me or it's nothing, it's something that I don't need in my life. I feel like when we get rid of things from ourselves, from our lives, it's because we want to make sure that we don't need them anymore. And for sure, you don't need these beliefs or these stories, whatever it is negative that is coming to you. But it is good to learn and understand, okay, now that I look at it, now that I see it, you know, maybe there is, and seeing the reason why, it might really help you a little bit better in, in actually moving through and putting it on the side and then seeing what's on the other, on the other side of the tunnel, right? And so, and then also learning the message, learning the medicine from it. So one of the things that I told you in the email yesterday was like, if there is one memory that comes to mind, one belief, one memory, one event, one emotion that comes to kind of like keep it, you know, um, with you. So this is your, I'm going to write your comment in a second, Claudia. This is your opportunity just to hold on to that thought, to that um, emotion, that belief that is coming to you. But maybe spend a few minutes in your journal and think about, okay, so whether you know where it came from, who was around you at the time, but also what is the connection that you have with that belief? Why do you think that you're keeping it? Is it because, is it keeping you safe? Is it because it's something that is keeping you together with somebody? Um, maybe you completely don't know, but maybe it is, it would be good to just kind of look at it. Just look at it. Don't judge it. Don't question it. Don't love it either. Cause I don't want to tell you something right away that maybe you don't feel like it, but just look at it. Um, just as somebody like a little kid, you know, our thoughts also have energy and personality as well. I think so look at it as if it is a little person. It's nothing to do with you. It's just like a little kid from the neighborhood that came knock on your door and say, hey, what's up? And you're like, who are you? Well, look at it in that sense, like, who are you? Like, what are you here for? And we'll have this conversation tomorrow. So Claudia is saying, is it possible or okay to have forgiven somebody and choosing not having more contact with them? 
especially when this person continues to be the same one who hurt you before and is not genuinely apologetic. It is possible. And here's the thing when it comes to healing, that things don't have to happen both ways. When we work about around ourselves, we are doing really healing for our soul, for our mind, for our spirit, and everything that has to do with us. And actually, believe it or not, that helps the other person. It heals the other person. They don't have to know it, but they do. Probably they're not going to feel like, ooh, like, kind of like if you've seen, Clara, you probably know, like, La Rosa de Guadalupe. <laughs> they're not going to feel that wind in their face, and then, like, a flower is going to show up, meaning, oh, there's a miracle happening. Um, but their soul will know. And there's this other thing that I actually love talking about, but we don't have time now, maybe another time. It's about our, our contract, soul contract. So we all have a soul contract with the people around us. So if there is a person who you connected with at some point in your life, so that was a contract, right? Like that's when it actually, it started long ago, but that's where it actually mat materialized it in this life. And something happened, so the two of you kind of went different ways. Somebody got hurt. There was a lot of fight or forgiveness or whatever happened, right? So the contract in a way is kind of like broke, but not really because there are things, if he or she, the, if, if it is the thought is still around in your mind, it's because the contract is not done. It's not going to completely done. And uh, we don't know what will happen in the future. There might be a moment and maybe the two people are going to come back together and have to say some things. Maybe if you are healing and you are forgiving now and it's giving you that peace of mind and you're okay with yourself, but who knows, maybe that other person is not okay. Maybe at some point they might come to you. Who, again, nobody knows what will happen in the future, right? So all we can do is really work on ourselves and do what we can with forgiveness, with love and compassion, not caring and not worrying if the other person will reciprocate or not. If they do, great, but you don't have to feel obligated to, to get back to them as well. Because again, I always feel like the healing that we can do is just mainly for us. If it helps the other person, great. Again, you don't have to tell them. Um, they might, they might, it might, your healing, how you are doing and in forgiving them, it might be, for example, for them, it could be a sign of, you know, relief. It could be a sign of something happening, something good happening to them. So they actually start trusting more in people that maybe has nothing to do with you as well. They don't have to have that awareness about you, but it is more about their soul and how they choose, because we all have free will, how we choose to live our life. So I hope that helps. Let me know if it doesn't. <laughs> I know you, so you can always reach out to me. Um, but if the person continues to be the same, um, you can always do, you know, do yourself, really. You can always forgive and not worry. Not Basically, if you are looking into his or her actions, I mean, I, I don't know who it is, but if you are looking into, oh, my gosh, I have forgiven him. Let's say it's a hit, right? I have forgiven him. And I've, years have passed and I don't hold any grudges. I don't hold resentment or anger or whatever. But how come he's not doing the same? It's because we are expecting something. And why are we doing that? We are so in our head, very in our mind. And when we step too much in our head, when we spend so much time overthinking the process, then there's, there could be healing, but then at the same time, we are already feeling stuck. Maybe in another, not in the same feeling of anger, but maybe in another uh, emotion, still it will keep us in a state of, you know, like being in a loop. So getting out of your mind helps, meaning just release it, let it go. Do what you can do with you and the people around you, but don't worry what's going to be from the other end. Don't worry what's coming back to you. If it comes back to you in good vibes, good positive energy, amazing and good for you because you deserve it but then at the same time it is it is not up to you but then here's the other thing too as we are healing emotions and maybe it is related to other people we also receive so much that doesn't necessarily has to be from that person let's say you might be expecting also um maybe you're expecting that this person let's say he betrayed you you're expecting somebody coming to you and saying i'm so sorry you want him to come and tell you i'm so sorry i did all of this to you I'm, a, you know, I'm a bad person. I don't deserve you. I never deserve you. You, you. you deserve better and all of that, right? Maybe you're expecting that. I don't know. I'm just saying. 
<clears throat> maybe he's not going to come and tell you any of that. But what if there is somebody else who does in a different way? What if you actually receive love, affection, attention, praise, acknowledgement from another person? Not necessarily through the same experiences. It could be completely different. Maybe it could be a co-worker who's telling you how amazing you are. Maybe it could be your parents or it could be your daughter. It could be somebody who really tells you how amazing human being, soul being, a wonderful woman, how anything, any kind of high vibe, positive affirmation who is really lighting you up. That doesn't mean that um, because it's not coming from you, it doesn't mean that it doesn't belong to you. So hopefully this makes sense. Um, but I love the question because I, I know that a lot of us who are so in our heads start overthinking and then we're like, well, if I give this, I should get that, this, you know, the same thing back. But mm, not always it happens that way. All right, guys, so I'm going to have to go because I have an appointment and I have to go. So I love you all. I'll see you guys soon. And then um, that's it. Okay. Bye.